Good evening and welcome to our introduction to GCSE evening. Um, I've had the absolute pleasure of welcoming your children back to school this the last couple of weeks and I can say that it's been brilliant to see them all again, working extremely hard in their lessons and behaving impeccably during social time as well. I'd like to say a big, big thank you and well done to every single one of them. And thank you for your support for sending them into school equipped and ready for learning. That's absolutely fabulous. Um, Today's evening, hopefully you'll find extremely helpful in terms of preparing your children for their GCSEs in two years time. It's an evening that will help in terms of knowing the GCSE subjects a little bit more, getting to know how much um, exams, how long the exams will be, and all sorts of things about the syllabus and the curriculum. Um, I'm now gonna pass you over to Mr. Rattigan, who's gonna inform you a little bit more about this evening and introduce um, the heads of subjects. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Ms. Veer, and good evening, everybody. It's been wonderful to be able to welcome students back into school over the last two weeks and support them with their learning. Equally, it's fantastic to be able to talk this evening not about social distancing and hand sanitising, but about learning, progress and achievement. We hope that you find the information shared this evening useful in understanding how the next two years will work, building up to the all-important GCSE exams in the summer of 2022. Over the course of the evening, we will try and answer some um, key questions. Um, we've also respond to any questions that have been sent in um, beforehand, and if there will be an opportunity to ask further questions um, after the evening, um, if necessary. So some of the questions we're going to try to um, cover this evening include um, explaining how year 10 and 11 are structured, for students, um, what information will be sent home about children's progress, um, how much homework is set. Um, GCSEs have changed significantly in the last few years, so we'll try and explain um, some of those changes. And we'll provide information on the exam boards that we use um, and the forms of assessment in the different subjects. Um, we'll touch on um, how we've looking at adapting our curriculum um, for year 10 as a result of the disruption due to COVID-19. Um, and we'll cover how you at, at home can support your child um, to do as well as possible. Um, so also looking a little bit beyond GCSEs to um, what we need to know about what might what happens after GCSEs and what happens next. And I'm pleased to be at, to have um, representatives from English, Maths and Science here um, who will talk a little bit in those core subjects about how years 10 and 11 will operate for them. So as I said, um, a Google form has been shared with this presentation. So if you have any further questions that aren't answered during the presentation, please do complete the form and we will um, attempt to answer them as best we can. All of the information shared this evening will be sent out via parent mail um, too. So normally at this point, we talk a little bit about um, our year 11 GCSE results um, and what we've learned from those, um, from the experience of those students and their outcomes. Of course, this year, students did not sit those exams and their final grades um, were determined through a process within school. So it's not as appropriate, they haven't been through that um, sort of standardised national exam process um, to reflect on in that way. Um, so I just want to look back briefly to the class of 2019, um, students who are now in uh, year 13, if, there's, if they've stayed in our sixth form. Um, and this, these are the students on a, on a beautiful GCSE results day in the summer of 2019, um, collecting their grades. And I'd like to just share um, how well they did, um, the, um, mainly um, as an indicator that um, a lot of the things that we do and a lot of things we'll talk about really do work. And if you, as students, can work hard, follow the guidance and follow the advice of your teachers, you've got every chance of doing extremely well. Um, this shows, um, the graph on the left shows the average attainment across the best eight subjects for each student, um, 51 being um, above a grade five as the average and above the national average. Um, 
and increases in the percentage of students achieving fives and fours um, in both English and maths. Um, the biggest measure as a school is, is our Progress 8 score, and that's the progress of students compared to the national average. And in 2019, our score was 0 0.32 above average. And that means that um, students at Wheatley Park in 2019 achieved around a third of a grade on average above um, the national average um, in each of their subjects. Um, so it's significantly higher um, than the national average and gives us real confidence that um, the various systems and processes we have in place at Key Stage 4 and at Key Stage 3 give our students the be best opportunity of success and we really encourage you to engage fully with those, listen to the advice we've got, talk to us about how we can help and give ourselves all the best chance of making um, years 10 and 11 as successful as possible. Um, we also have excellent outcomes in the sixth form. Um, the um, red line indicates the national average consistently above the national average, but increasing to 63% of grades at A star to B. And the um, ALPS thermometer on the right hand side shows results in terms of value added in the top 10% of sixth forms in the country. Um, so once you've got your GCSE results, the sixth form is really a great place um, to go and get that next level and start looking towards other destinations such as university. So what made the difference for these students in year 11, but also in the sixth form? I'm going to talk about some key um, indicators, key cornerstones around our approach and our messages with students. Attendance makes a massive difference. So be here, working hard in lessons every day. Those are the two most important things. Um, they will make the most difference. Homework being set, being completed, being completed to a high standard regularly is the next one. And then revising, preparing really well for the, for the exams in the summer. So those are our kind of four pillars of trying to make sure every student is doing those as effectively as possible. In terms of attendance, this graph shows for the class of 2019 an indication of how much difference good attendance makes to your progress. Um, the average progress on the um, left, on the y-axis, on the left-hand axis, um, shows that the higher your attendance, the further to the right you are, the higher your the average progress for that group. And even the difference between, say, 95 and 97 percent and 97 to 100 percent um, is significant. So being here every day on time um, gives you the best possible chance of success. Working hard. This graph, um, you may, if you don't know me, you may be slowly realizing I, I am a maths teacher um, and therefore um, do enjoy a few graphs to demonstrate some points. These are the average attitude to learning scores for students in 2019 and plotted against the progress. And the higher the attitude to learning score given by the teachers, the highest score being five, the higher those points are on that graph indicating the higher the chance of good progress. So being here, high attendance, 97, 98, 99, 100%. Um, working hard, having your attitude to learning score average above four, completing everything you can in lessons, going that little bit, doing that little bit extra for homework or whatever, is what will make the biggest difference in terms of progress. Um, we'll come on to homework a little bit more. And revision, um, we've got some very clear strategies and techniques to help students, particularly when they get into year 11, to revise and prepare well for their exams. I'll talk more about those um, in a little bit. So I'm now going to just talk a little bit about how years 10 and 11 work and the kind of pattern and structure of those two years. Um, they form part of our seven year Wheatley Park um, learning journey with key milestones and important points in every year group. Um, so in year 10, um, focusing on kind of assessment and exams at the moment um, and some of the dates and things may need to be tweaked um, or some of the events for example parents evening um, 
we need to review the best way to operate parents evening in the uh, in the current climate but you would expect in year 10 to receive um, three progress reports one in november one in march and one in july and then an early parents evening early on in year 10 so that any questions and issues can be uh, sorted as soon as possible um, on november the 19th um, in the summer shortly after the gcse exams we plan to run um, a year 10 exam series which would be the first experience students would have of spending one or two weeks doing exams in every or almost every subject in which they're going to be entered. So it will be quite an intense period, but an important um, point on that journey, getting used to so that you can exam so that you can perform as well as possible in the summer of year 11. And then we move into year 11, um, another early parents evening, um, Work experience usually takes place um, in October. Um, fourth progress report in November. Um, further progress reports in January and March. Um, sixth form open evening um, takes place in November, which is an important um, event to, as you start exploring and looking at um, your options um, post GCSEs. And then two sets of internal exams. So we have our mock exams in November and um, that's a full set and a slightly smaller set, mainly core subjects of pre-public exams in March. Um, with those three sets of um, sort of formal internal exam series, we hope to get you prepared and able to really perform at your best in an exam situation. Um, the summer exam season's usually due to start um, in May of year 11, and at present, there's no reason to expect that to be any different in 2022. Um, so when we report home, um, we'll report three main things. Um, similar to a key stage three, an attitude to learning score on a one to five scale with five being absolutely fantastic, always going above and beyond, always asking questions um, and engaging really well in lessons. Um, Areas for concern, identified if there's any specific concerns or areas that can be improved. Um, and then um, the new what the new um, piece of information is called um, our gap grades or our grade at present progress. And this is a prediction based on the information that we currently have as to what a student is most likely to get at GCSE. Now we'll start making those predictions from November this year. And obviously there's a long way to go. So they can go up and they can go down, but they will be based on our evidence and our knowledge of how students progress over the two years um, in previous cohorts, a prediction. So it may be a grade six, um, but they'll actually be divided into one of 6A, 6B or 6C. 6A means prediction is a grade six, but they're pushing close to a seven and that could easily convert to a seven um, if they can make good progress. A six B would mean a six secure, pretty solid. We'd ex expect them to get a B, um, uh, sorry, expect them to get a six. Um, and a six C is kind of borderline, could be a six, could dip down to a five, need to do more work to secure that six and make sure um, it's definitely achieved. So it just gives a little bit of an extra um, fine level um, grading to allow a bit more information about where we think the students are at. And after each exam series, we'll also share the grades from the exams. These might be lower than the gap grades, and that's because they'll be the grade the student got on that exam as though it was a real exam taken on that day. The grade at present progress is a prediction about the future taking into account some expected progress, but the exam grades will be the grades they would have got if that had been a real exam. Um, and so they'll be lower, but we'll be aiming over the two years to increase those exam grades so they are closer and closer to the gap grade at the grade at present progress. In terms of homework, um, subjects, you should expect subjects will set around an hour a week per subject um, and give at least two full days for students to complete them. Um, 
through Google Classroom, homework should be set and you can um, sign up to get the alerts to get the alerts and um, um, and have that shared with you as parents. Um, if you need to set that up in any way or anything, please do email Chromebook help at weeklypark.org and they can sort that out for you. Um, in terms of changes to GCSE, so we've had a few years now of the new GCSEs um, and they started to bed in. They have changed a lot from what they were like three or four years ago. And the content has changed. The level of difficulty of the content is greater. Um, there are more examinations and less coursework involved. Um, and exams tend to almost always have to be at the end of the course. So you can't take one of the exams at the end of year 10 or um, in January of year 11. There are a few small exceptions, which we'll mention in a little bit. And there is a new grade system that I'll go through. Um, although the examinations and the content may be harder, um, the government uses a system called comparable outcomes to try and make sure that students in one year are not disadvantaged. So if the examinations are harder, it might be that adjustments are made to the grade boundaries, um, taking into account the cohort to ensure each year that a student who would have got a full one year would get a full the following year um, and so on. Um, we do run a small number of alternative qualifications that are not GCSEs that I'll talk about too. They're, they tend to be the qualifications where it's possible to sit exams at different times, not necessarily at the end of the course. In terms of the grading structure, A's, B's, C's, A stars are out of the window at GCSE and it's all about numbers. So the highest grade you could achieve is a grade nine. Um, and the lowest, um, apart from a U, would be a grade one. Um, in terms of comparability, a grade seven is equivalent to a grade A at GCSE in old money. A grade four is equivalent to a grade C. <coughs> so um, a string of grade sevens would be equivalent to in a few years ago getting a string of grade A's, for example. Um, and other grades are kind of fitted in between. So there's not a direct comparison for an old grade B. It's somewhere between a five and a six, um, for example. In terms of our exam boards, um, this information will be shared uh, along with the presentation. But you can see each of the subjects that we um, run, the exam board, um, the run on the specification number if you're looking for the syllabus and the breakdown of the assessment so um, each how much each exam's work worth or if we don't do an exam or if part of it's not examined through non-exam assessments of controlled assessments or performances or practical work um, so that's indicated on there um, and I said we'll share that um, along with the present with the information from the presentation um, after this evening. I mentioned technical qualifications. So we offer three qualifications that um, are not GCSEs, but they are equivalent to GCSEs. And they are Cambridge National Qualifications in Information Technologies or IT, Health and Social Care and Sports Science. Um, they tend to offer a slightly different assessment structure. So they, as, I, as I said, they might have more controlled assessment or they might have some exams that don't take place um, at, right at the end of the course. Um, but we've chosen those very carefully. We believe that they provide really good opportunities for students to learn important knowledge and skills that um, will be useful for them depending on their chosen career paths. Um, they usually have a different grade structure. So the grade structure is around distinctions, merits and passes at level one or level two. And the table here shows how something would compare to a GCSE grade. So a level two pass in one of those technical qualifications is equivalent to a GCSE grade four. A level two distinction would be equivalent to a GCSE grade seven, for example. So another question for, that's important for us to um, answer and consider is, 
about the impact that COVID-19 will have had on this cohort. Every year group, in every subject, we've considered what impact it may have had and what adaptations we need to make. We start from a relatively advantageous position because our year 10 students last year were already studying some of their option subjects through the year nine focus and enrichment program. So it means, for example, if you're doing business or media studies, you have already started learning that course, where in another school, you may not have even had a lesson yet in that subject. The second advantage has been our Chromebooks program. Everyone learning everywhere has meant that a lot of learning has been able to continue relatively smoothly um, remotely during lockdown, which means we're not necessarily missed as much as we could have done. We know that the vast majority of students worked hard during lockdown. They completed the work that was set, they attended online lessons when they were running, and that will have helped. Um, despite that, we know that we may need to tweak our curriculum plans. We may need to make sure we give enough time to revisit and reinforce things that may have been taught during lockdown um, and make sure that no individuals are left behind. To do that, um, what's called, we would use formative assessment. So teachers will, um, having tweaked their curriculum plans, make sure that they use um, assessment of students in lessons to make sure we identify which things have been securely learned during lockdown and if there are, where there are things that need a bit more time and to be revisited. With two years ahead of us, there is time to tweak things and move things around. But the fact that lots of good learning happened during lockdown will have certainly made that easier um, for us going forward. So as a parent or carer, what can you do to support your child and help them do well? The key things remain attendance and attitude to learning supporting them being here every day on time and encouraging them to have a really good attitude towards their learning both at school and at home will really help. Um, caring for them, looking up, look after them and helping them look after themselves. So we will improve attendance and attitude to learning if we're well rested, if we're well fed and exercise is excellent for both physical and mental health so making sure that we're taking care of ourselves during the time not going to bed too late um, not eating too much junk food um, making sure that we're getting good rest sleep eating well and exercising ensuring that the conditions for learning at home are good so for making sure they've got a quiet space that they can work keeping them in a routine whether that's completing their homework as soon as they get in from school or having a break and then getting it done before dinner those kind of routines help um, make sure that um, learning continues to happen um, and as the next two years go students will be expected to complete more and more independent study and revision so providing support um, to help them do that um, we will talk more during year 11 about specific revision strategies um, and um, later on in year 10, but helping them manage their time um, reasonably with that certainly helps. And taking an interest in their learning, so asking questions about what they've learned in school, testing their understanding, checking them, test them, using their notes to test them, um, or even getting them to teach you what they've been learning about, all of those things will help um, keep their attention on what's gone on in school, help revisit things that they've learned and interrupt the process of forgetting about them that takes place over time. This is Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. It shows how quickly retention of new information decreases as time passes, how quickly we forget what we have learned or experienced. Therefore, it's important to interrupt the process of forgetting by revisiting knowledge by forcing ourselves to retrieve it before it is too hard to remember. Every time we do this, we embed the knowledge more securely in our long-term memory, making it easier to retrieve in the future. Our subject leaders have planned plenty of opportunities for effortful retrieval of previously learnt knowledge throughout the two years. These include revisiting topics through starters, making links and connections between topics, and low stakes tests where students are expected to recall what they have learned previously in the year. 
In year 11, we'll provide detailed guidance on how to prepare for GCSE exams and revise for these at home. Students will become very familiar with flashcards as a means of testing themselves, whether online versions or as a hard copy. It's never too soon to start, however, and any student would benefit from revisiting or testing themselves on what they can remember from the previous week or the previous term. Every time we retrieve that information, it improves our chances of doing so when it really matters in the exam. Although there's some way to go to the end of year 11, we will also begin thinking this year about what happens after GCSEs. There are a wide range of options to consider and lots of support and guidance available. Many students will progress onto either A-level or BTEC courses in our sixth form. The entry requirements for the sixth form are five grade fours, including in English and maths, and eight completed qualifications in total. The sixth form open evening takes place in November of year 11, where you'll be able to find out much more, including about the different courses available. There's also the option to go to a local college for post-16 study, and other sixth forms are also nearby. You also have the chance to find out about apprenticeships and training, other training opportunities over the course of the next two years. We have a dedicated careers advisor in school who's available for appointments and lots more information on careers can be found via the careers at WPS page on the student portal. So that's an overview of a lot of the things taking place over the next two years. I'm pleased now to introduce representatives of our core subjects, English, Maths and Science, who will share some information about their Key Stage 4 courses. First, we have our second in English and Year 10 lead, um, Mrs Numa. Hello, my name is Carrie Numa and I am second in charge of the English department um, with responsibility for Year 9 and 10 English. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the GCSE um, English qualifications. And the first thing to note is that we um, study for two GCSEs, English language and English literature. And we do both of those with the um, exam board AQA. So both um, GCSEs are 100% exam and they have two exams each, typically in May, so we're looking at May 2020 for literature and June 20, uh, sorry, May 2022 for literature and June 2022 for language. And we also do a spoken language endorsement with the um, English language qualification um, and some of you may know that as the speaking and listening um, assessment. Um, that doesn't count towards the GCSE grade but it will be shown as a pass, merit or distinction on the GCSE certificate. And what people often ask is which grade counts, which one's most important? Well, in terms of entry requirements for college or sixth form, it's whichever is higher will count as your English grade. Um, statistically, English is um, easier to um, be successful in. Um, we think that's mainly due to, due to it being um, uh, concrete, you know, there's something concrete for you to learn. You can learn quotations, you can understand the plot really well, the characters, context. Um, and that's why we tend to spend a little bit more time on it. Let's have a look at the qualifications in more detail then. So what will we be studying over the next two years? Well, literature paper one is the Shakespeare and 19th century novel um, paper, and that's 40% of literature GCSE. Um, for illustrative purposes, I've put the exam date there um, from last year. That was the last time, obviously, our students sat the exam, and that was the 15th of May 2019. So literature tends to be before the May half term and language um, afterwards. So we study here at Wheatley Park uh, Romeo and Juliet as our Shakespeare text and uh, for our 19th century novel uh, The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Paper two is worth 60% of the literature GCSE and for that um, we will study an inspector course which we started with this term. We will study power and conflict poetry which is an anthology which um, is actually provided by the exam board. And then the set, uh, this broken into three sections, the third section is unseen poetry. So we'll prepare students for poems they've probably never seen before um, and looking at how the writer uses language, structure, etc. to present their ideas. 
Now, English language, as I said, for illustrative purposes, um, I've put the date on there. That was um, the 4th of June, so after the May half term. Um, English language, um, there are two papers again, and they are very similar in that they're broken down into two sections. Section A is a reading section, and section B is a writing section, and they're both worth um, 40 marks each on both papers. So both papers um, are equally weighted. This is the um, Explorations in Creative Reading and Writing paper, paper one, but we just call it the fiction paper. It's the easiest way to remember it. Um, remember, fiction is made up. So you'll have an extract probably from a short story or a novel, um, probably that you will have, uh, that students will have never seen before. Um, and they will answer four questions on that. The questions each year are very similar, which is really helpful. So we know how to prepare for the exam. And then the writing section, because it's the fiction paper, you'll have to write um, a description or a narrative. And there is an image there as a stimulus to get, help students come up with some ideas. Paper two, the writer's viewpoints and perspectives um, is the title. But again, that's just, we, we know that as the non-fiction paper. So non-fiction, real life. And that will um, consist, it's a bit different. It consists of two extracts um, for the reading section. And again, just four questions to answer there. But the, one of the extracts would be from the 19th century. So it's slightly trickier in terms of the understanding the language, slightly less accessible. But again, we'll teach students um, how to approach that and be successful with that. And for the writing task, they have to write, um, they have to put forward their viewpoint on something. So they're writing um, to persuade, to argue um, in response to a statement or a question. So what do students need to do over the next couple of years? It'd be really, really helpful if they can get their own copies of the texts for literature. As I said, AQA provide the anthology, so they don't need to buy that. But I will share the information of some um, reasonably priced texts that we um, use in school. Um, this isn't compulsory. We do have copies of texts for students to share. Um, however, if they have their own copy, it means they can annotate it, they write their own notes in there as we're studying it. They can take it away so it's at home with them for revision. And and it's also really helpful um, in terms of making sure um, that they have their, that with them for rereading later in the year. They also need to learn the key knowledge. For example, we've got the Inspector Corps Knowledge Organiser here, and they're used to using those now. And that has all of the information that we need on it, um, such as context, about characters, key quotations, etc. Um, and they will use that. But they need to know how to use that and other things to test themselves and other people, perhaps. And so this final image relates to Brainscape, which is an app that we're going to try and use um, over the next um a year or two, we're going to start that in lessons um, this week and next week um, to help them um, learn flashcards. It's a flashcard app, you can use it on Chromebooks but also on phones as well, so that's great. And we also want them to read and discuss adult materials. So when we think about langu English language, the extracts will be from adult texts. They're not going to be young adult fiction or teenage fiction. These will be texts from some classics, perhaps, for the fiction paper, um, newspaper articles, journals, perhaps. So if they're used to that style of writing, that will really, really help them. So how can you as parents help? So it'd be great if you could get used to the flashcards app. Yes, students can do it on their own, but if you could test them as well, that can be really, really helpful. Um, watching and discussing film adaptations with them, um, getting to know the text with your child um, can also be really helpful. And also then, of course, involving them in adult conversation. So understanding how to communicate in a mature way will really benefit them when it comes to their own writing. So I think that's everything from me. If you have any further questions that aren't addressed in the um, frequently asked questions section later, um, then please do, um, there'll be contact details to email me or your child's class teacher and um, I'm going to pass over to Maths now. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Miss Pearson. I'm Head of Maths at Wheatley Park School. I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about the GCSE in mathematics. Miss Barry is another member of the maths team that will be really crucial to your child as they move through year 10 and year 11, and she leads on key stage four within the maths team. The maths GCSE is fully exam assessed. So at the end of year 11, your child will sit three 90 minute papers. There is no coursework for the maths GCSE, and there are two different tiers, foundation and higher tier. On foundation tier, you can get up to a grade five, and on higher tier, you can get up to a grade nine. 
And to put that into old terms, a grade five is harder than a grade C. And at Wheatley Park School, we sit the AQA exam board for mathematics. In mathematics, each question is assigned an assessment objective. So AO1 questions are knowledge. They will be similar to those questions that your students will be seeing in lessons. They're standard techniques that they should be really confident with. And AO2 and AO3 questions are problem solving and reasoning questions. They're more unfamiliar and they require you to apply your maths to a different question. So if we have a look at some examples of questions, just to give you an idea of what they'll look like. AO1 questions look a little bit like this. They tell you exactly what to do. So it's saying work out the fraction halfway between a half and one and a quarter. It gives you a diagram to help you represent that and visualize it as you work through it. It's a three mark question and similar to one that students will have seen at some point in their maths lessons. If we compare that to an AO23 example, you'll notice instantly there's a lot more text to extract the maths from. So students will need to decide what to do with the numbers, what to do when they finally get to their calculation. So they have to unpick from the question to decide what the maths is. Part B of that question then asks them, if something changes, how will it affect the answer? Now, in our math lessons, we'll do a lot of practice like this. So if change one thing, what happened? To build confidence and experience with these types of questions that students are ready for these when they sit their maths GCSE. So it is a challenge. The maths GCSE is not going to be easy for every student and it's going to be exciting. There's gonna be lots of different types of questions. So it's not just gonna be the AO1 questions. There's gonna be a mix. You'll notice that there are more questions that are problem solving questions. So it'll prepare you for using maths in different types of contexts. So it's really important that you become fluent with the key skills that you need to have. If you're fluent with your fraction knowledge, you'll be able to apply that a lot easier to problem solving questions that require fractions. So we do a lot of fluency practice in our lessons and at home. So it's important that you're putting in the effort now to really be thinking about your math. So in class, you're thinking hard, you're working through the steps and at home, you're completing all your homework and seeking help if you're struggling. And it's so important that you start that practice now so that you can build that fluency. Please make sure if you're a student, you're acting on feedback. So you can use your Hegarty Maths platform to help you with that. And I know lots of you have found that's been really helpful, especially over lockdown. It's got the videos and the quizzes for every topic you'll need to be using for your GCSE. When you log on, you'll notice that there's a green section. That's quizzes you got 100% on. And the red and the amber sections are ones that you might need a little more practice on. They're ones to definitely watch the video on before you have another go. So if you're a parent sitting in the audience and wondering, I don't know how I'm gonna help my student with maths. It maybe was not your favorite subject or it's been a really long time since you did it. You don't need to worry. Hegarty Maths has videos for absolutely everything. You don't need to be an expert explaining the maths at home. You can encourage them to use their um, donut, which is on their homepage, the one I just showed you, um, and pick out the red and the amber sections. Encourage them to watch the video first if they got red or amber, it's likely that they'll need to see the explanations before they retry it and then retry those quizzes and see if they can convert them to green. You'll also notice that we've got the number of hours spent on Hegarty Maths um, and the number of skills that they've tried on that page as well. So you'll be able to keep an eye on how much math they're doing on that platform. One of the best features of Hegarty Maths is the memory function. We found last year and the year before when it began to be trialed that using memory, students gained approximately one GCSE grade if they used it regularly and carefully. So we recommend using it about three times a week. You can find memory using the revise function at the top of the home page and selecting memory. You'll notice it says new. It creates a personalized revision quiz for your child. 
So when you hit start quiz, it'll generate questions that you are 100% confident with. So if you did a quiz on Hegarty Maths on Air of Circles and got 100%, it will give you an Air of Circles question. If you did a circumference of circles quiz on Hegarty Maths and got 30%, it won't be giving you a circumference of circles question. And it remembers your data since you first ever started doing quizzes on Hegarty Maths. And it will prioritise the most important skills first. And as you complete more quizzes, they become even more tailored to what you need. When you're completing the quiz, it'll be around about 10 questions. There might be some questions that you get stuck on. I would highly recommend doing workings in the back of your maths book, just so you can set your workings out, you can practice every step, and you're not trying to do it in your head. For some questions, there'll be a video icon at the side, so I've got an arrow pointing to that here. That will take you to a video that explains how to do this skill. They're not on every question on memory, but they are on the ones that Hegarty Maths thinks you might need a bit more of a reminder on. Fix Up 5 is another function of Hegarty Maths, which your child will begin to use later in the GCSE course, where it generates five questions on things that they're not confident with so they can retry these. This is something to leave later into year 11. Student actions to make sure you make that difference in your maths for your maths GCSE. Make sure you understand every single lesson so that when you walk out of the classroom, you feel like you could get 100% on a quiz. Make sure you complete your homework to a really high standard. That's where we're going to be using a lot of fluency practice to build your confidence and make you better problem solvers. Every class gets set homework on a Monday due in for the Wednesday and a Wednesday due in for the Monday so that you're building a routine that you can stick to and it will help you stay organised. Make sure you get the right calculator. You need a calculator with natural display. So the one on the right hand side is the new model that we currently sell at Weekly Park and it has natural display. You might already own the one at the bottom. That's now been discontinued, so you can't purchase the same model. But if you do have the one at the bottom, that is absolutely fine. I'm now going to hand over to Mrs Clifton Rabone to tell you about science. Thank you, and welcome to this talk now on science at GCSE. I'm Mrs Clifton Rabone, and I'm the Curriculum Assessment Lead. So at GCSE, we use the AQA scheme of work. And we have two routes through science, the combined science trilogy um, and the separate sciences, so biology, chemistry and physics. And I'll touch on the differences between those in slightly more detail. So a real common question is if students do combined science, does that mean that they're dropping biology, chemistry or physics? And the answer is no. If they're doing combined science. They are still doing biology, chemistry and physics in a huge amount of breadth and depth. They're doing separate sciences, they're doing a little bit of extra content in each of those subjects. Okay. Consequently, this means that if students do combined science, they finish their course with two GCSEs at grades nine through to one. If they do separate sciences in biology, chemistry and physics, they finish their course with three GCSEs at grades nine through to one. If students do combined science, they can still study A-levels and any future studies in science. In order to do biology, chemistry or physics at Wheatley, we need sixes in science and those can be achieved in combined science or in separate sciences. We also have an applied science course that has slightly lower grade requirements. We have a huge amount of interesting content that gets covered in science. So in biology, we have these seven topics that you can see here. In chemistry, these 10 topics that you can see. And in physics, these seven topics. It's a really interesting course and we've chosen it because it gives you a really great overview of science and lots of really interesting ideas and concepts to study. We are confident that even in these slightly odd times, we are fully prepared for GCSE for this cohort. We've adjusted our curriculum plans to make sure we've covered all of our content by winter 2021. We've developed our homework to make sure that we're promoting fluency. We've got lots of feedback planned in to identify and address any gaps in knowledge. 
We have got huge amounts of exam preparation and practice already built into our curriculum, and we've developed really robust and effective independent resources for students to use outside of lessons. These are all accessed through the Science Student site, which has been shared by their teachers. Students at GCSE need to look at the Years 9 to 11 tab, which will lead them to our Quizlet and our Bite Size um, links. At the end of the course, all students will sit six exams in science, uh, two in biology, two in chemistry and two in physics. The difference is if they're on the combined science route, those exams will be an hour and 15 minutes in length. And if they're on the separate science route, those exams will be an hour and 45 minutes in length in order to examine that extra content that is in each of the topics. In order to make sure that we're really effectively preparing for exams, we suggest that at home, students make sure that they are always completing homework to develop their fluency, that they're using the Quizlet flashcards that we've created so that they get instant feedback. Those flashcards will help build in recall, making sure that we're doing regular deliberate practice of fundamental concepts. And also we should suggest that there is spaced learning so that those flashcards are used with gaps in between so that the process of forgetting can be interrupted. Okay, that's the overview of science from me. And I'm now gonna hand back to Mr. Rattigan to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mrs. Newmar, Miss Pearson and Mrs. Clifton Rabone for sharing information about English, maths and science, our core subjects and their key stage four programs. We're coming towards the end of our presentation now. Um, we did have a couple of questions submitted beforehand that I'd, I'd like to take a few moments to answer, and both related to the impact of COVID-19 um, on Key Stage 4 and our Year 10 students. So first of all, will there be any changes in exams due to disruption caused by COVID-19? Um, and for the current Year 10s, at the moment, we certainly hope not. We hope that um, Education won't be disrupted any further and exams will be able to proceed as planned in the summer of 2022. There have been a few changes for the current year 11 um, to their exams because obviously their key stage four programs have been interrupted. Um, for year 10 at the moment though, um, we're not aware of any plans for any changes. Obviously, if there is further disruption and things change, we will be in contact to let you know about that as soon as possible. The second question is about work experience and year 11. Work experience normally takes place um, in October of year 11. Um, for the current year 11 students, it's not going to be possible for them to take part in work experience in the same way. Um, but we are hopeful, optimistic that it will be possible for the current year 10 to be able to take part in work experience as normal um, in around 13 months in October of their year 11. Of course, again, things could change, but our normal plan is to launch work experience after Christmas, and we're working on that at the moment. So in January, do look out for further information about our work experience program. So um, what happens now? Um, we will send out by parent mail all of the information from this evening for you. Um, the Google form that um, um, is still live, so you can still submit some questions to that if those questions haven't been answered this evening, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. The first progress report of the year, as I've mentioned, is due in November at the beginning of term two. And currently, um, the year 10 parents evening is planned for November the 19th. We're currently investigating how we can operate a parents evening in a, in a safe way for all concerned um, and when we've got further information about what that might look like or entail, we will be in touch. In the meantime, I hope you found the information um, we've shared today useful. Thank you very much for watching um, and have a lovely evening. Thank you.